What's happening, guys? Paul from Mainmount Media. This is Spencer, and uh, you usually see me on camera, but behind the scenes, uh, he's doing a lot of the heavy lifting. He's our color grade uh, maestro, the master, and uh, we see a lot of videos online about how to color grade footage, log footage, S-log 3, F-log footage, all that good stuff. And um, yeah, we've spent a long time trying to perfect uh, how we go through the process. Um, there is no one quick single click, you know, the, the super easy fix. There is no single LUT that does all your footage for you. Um, and Spencer knows that better than anyone. So today, uh, he's going to be teaching me and you guys, uh, how he color grades all of our beautiful footage. Today, we're working with S-Log3 footage. Uh, S-Log3 footage is going to be out of either the FX6 or the FX3. So, uh, right now, this camera you're looking at, that's the FX3. Over here, we have the FX6, um, but that doesn't really actually matter that much. What we're gonna be looking at on screen is all FX6 footage. So um, all Sony FX6, mostly, I'm guessing, yeah, two shots out of the, Z the Rokinon Zine 50 millimeter, and the other one is likely the 7200 from Canon? Yep. Yeah, cool. Uh, so I've done more than enough talking, let's get into the color grading. All right, so we're gonna start with this shot. Uh, we shot up at Saddleback, Maine. Uh, we do a ton of filming for them throughout the winter. Um, this uh, was more specifically an apres shoot, so uh, we just thought this would be a good one to, to get started with. We got a ton of uh, dynamic range in this scene, and uh, like Paul said, we shot this on the FX6 with the Rokinon Zine CF 50 mil. And then uh, we did use the Godox uh, light to light this. It's true, yeah. So this is the VL350 with a 36-inch Octobox, um, which is off to camera right at about a 45-degree, lighting our two main subjects there, um, that guy and gal with the goggles on. Um, and we had to just finagle the light a little bit, try and make sure it didn't look too lit and too sort of hyper-staged, but at the same time, um, we're sitting next to a window on a sunny day to ski mountain, so we really want to try and balance the scene a little bit. Um, you can actually see the light in his goggle reflection there, but because he doesn't have spherical lenses, he has um, just cylindrical lenses, uh, the light is so obscured that it wasn't an issue. We got really lucky with that. So uh, that's something to keep out, an eye out for. Obviously, when you're lighting a scene, you don't want to see the light in the reflections. Um, but why don't you run us through this here, Spence? So basically, yes, yeah, so just so you guys know, we're Final Cut editors. Um, generally, it's a two-screen setup, but just for recording's sake, we're going to try and squeeze it all onto one monitor here, um, and most of the heavy lifting is going to be done with Color Finale Pro. Yep, and we're going to just start right off the bat with Color Finale. Um, I'm going to start with my color management and input a LUT. Uh, we recently just purchased the uh, Phantom Lutz from FX6, and they are awesome. So for those of you guys who are interested in these LUTs, we are not associated with or sponsored by Joel Femolero, but he's the one who put these together. They are generally designed to um, match other cameras with the Airy look. Airy is obviously a super high-end camera, and their colors are amazing. They're famous for their skin tones, something Sony is famously bad at. So what we're trying to do here is convert log footage into a color space where uh, the skin tones are a little more pleasing. So we're running the neutral LUT almost all the time. Yep. Uh, in this scenario, I think, you know, it's, I, I want a little more flat of a scene. You know, there's, there's a ton of dynamic range here. There was already a bunch of contrast in the scene. So I'm gonna add this FX, this neutral FX6 LUT, and then I'm just gonna bring it back to sort of a point where I think I like the, the contrast ratio, and it's gonna be somewhere in here. So if, if I'm not mistaken, the mix is basically the opacity of the LUT? Yep, All right. yep. Uh, you know, it's, most of the time with this neutral LUT, it's, it's dead on, it's perfect, especially when, the, when your scene is exposed properly, and I'm just gonna leave it all the way up. But for this scene, I'm gonna bring it back down a little bit. All right, love it. This is your basics panel in Final Cut, or in uh, Color Finale Pro. Um, 
And we're just gonna add a little bit of contrast here back into the image. Just real quick, what if I don't have color finale? Is there anything you can do in Final Cut where I can get any of these types of panels going? There is. Uh, up here in the right panel, there's, uh, in your inspector panel, there, um, Final Cut does provide color wheels as well as a color board, uh, color curves, and hue saturation curves. Uh, these are all super effective tools, but um, I think Color Finale just produces a much better product and uh, has a lot more options, especially once we get into the layers panel of Color Finale. And Color Finale is what? It was like a one-time $100, $150 purchase, right? Yeah, like it's a fantastic purchase. It's worth every penny, I think, if you want to take your color grading seriously. But if you're just starting off, I, I spent a lot of time in, uh, in the color boards and color wheels of Final Cut Pro, and that's a great place to start. And, and Color Finale is a cool one, too, because it is cross-platform. You don't have to be in Final Cut to be using Color Finale, which is super nice. Yeah. Um, we're going to get rid of all those. All right. Add a little contrast. I'm going to check the white balance here. Uh, if you don't have a gray card, finding something white that's you know, almost pure white in your scene or 50% gray. Um, and we got something that's nice and white. I know that snow is white. I want it to be white. And so we're gonna just color pick that. And it's already pretty close because we, I think we uh, got our white balance pretty correct on scene, so. Um, so temperature's good. I'm happy with the tint. These colors already look super great. I'm gonna add a little bit of saturation and just a little bit of sharpness. The sharpening tool at a color finale is, uh, I think, way better than Final Cut and any other plugin that I've used. It's uh, It's got a really nice, clean, crisp look to it that doesn't, I mean, you can or over sharpen it, but it's barely even noticeable. I, I have no problem cranking this right up and, and getting a nice sharp image. Uh, all right, we're gonna go into the layers panel here. And uh, we're gonna add some color wheels over here. And this is just gonna adjust my black and white points on my histogram here. Really nice that you can label all of your layers in here. That's one thing that Final Cut doesn't offer that Color Finale does and help you uh, stay organized while you're color grading. So I don't want to crush my blacks all the way. Just sort of bring it down a little bit. What do you mean by crush your blacks? So uh, over here on the waveforms, there is a zero down here and a hundred up here. And those are your uh, values of light um, throughout your scene. So if you come all the way down here and uh, this is your black point, if I bring my blacks all the way down, I start losing detail and information throughout my scene, right? And so I wanna just make sure that you know, there were a lot of black things in this scene, right? Under his armpits, uh, the shirt over here on the right, uh, the girl's hat over here on the left. Um, so I want to—I just want to be careful about where where that black point lies, right? If it's too high up here, then it's too flat of an image. If I bring it too far down, it's too crunchy. So I'm 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 looking for subtleties in my color grading, right? That's what it's all about. Just those tiny minor adjustments can mean a lot later on. Perfect. And then this is pure white. I'm, I'm lying that somewhere around 90%, 93%. And I'm going to bring that back up, especially so we get some exposure on our subject's face here. That looks pretty good to me. We're going to add a curves layer. Uh, down here in mode, you have master in RGB and luma in RGB. Master in RGB, you start adding contrast. That's going to start adding color to your... Uh, it sort of affects all the channels, right? Red, green, and blue. This will just, if you switch it to Luma in RGB, it is just gonna adjust the luminosity values within that that tone curve. Okay, cool. Right? So like if so you lift not, your, your highlights, you don't just all of a sudden yeah. start pulling colors into your if highlights. If I switch oh, it I back and forth, that's a master. Look how red his face is and how saturated those highlights are. Nice. Okay. And then, and so I can I can control my saturation a lot better 
control my colors a lot better if you choose the the Luma RGB. Wow. That's a sneaky little setting that makes it, a big difference, it is. huh? Yep, absolutely. Uh, that's perfect. I'm gonna label this basic contrast, and then even that's a little too much. Another great thing about uh, actually Final Cut has this option as well, but uh, adjusting the mix of each layer, right? So I can add a layer, make my adjustments. I can bring it. I can I can go too far, you know, and then sort of just adjust my mix back to where I want that that contrast to lie. Cool. So you really, can set up the curve the way you want it to be, and then pull back the intensity. Really, really helpful tool. Cool. And what's the benefit to doing your basic contrast in a uh, a curve here instead of instead of just using the contrast slider in the basics panel. You're going to get a lot more control uh, through the tone curve here. This is just going to sort of add overall contrast and to sort of decide where along that waveform it's going to add that contrast. This you can really pick and choose, pick and choose your points. Right? You can you can use your picker tool over here, pick your luminosity values that you wanna you wanna adjust. Right? on his face and then I can I can sort of adjust the contrast within within there so cool really helpful tool to sort of fine tune your look you're going to uh, a lot of, a lot of your look is going to be determined by your tone curve as well so the the points you're clicking there you're basically saying I want all of my darker points to be slightly darker yep yeah, down here, this is, so this is a graph. You got your black point down here and your white point up here, right? And this is going to adjust my black point again. Okay. And sort of adjust those very, very dark areas of the scene. And if I come up here, I'm adjusting the very brightest parts of my scene. And is this S, it looks like, you know, that S-shaped curve, is that a fairly common curve shape for a lot of people when they're creating it, abso contrast? it absolutely is. Uh, so this is how you, uh, this is the, the classic contrast curve, S-curve here, right? If you bring it, if we reset this and bring it the other way, that's going to brighten up my scene, right? It's going to going to reduce oh it's going to reduce the contrast right okay so you're sort of reflattening the scene if you're doing that yeah. i see okay and since we started with such a flat scene it would be unlikely we would go that way with your curve cuz we already have a flat slog curve right cool Correct. i really like that curve so we're going to go back to that all right uh, we are going to yeah, I'm going to keep this nice and subtle because there's already a bunch of contrast in there. Uh, that's fantastic. I'm going to add another color wheels. So this is everything I'm, uh, all the layers I'm adding here, this is not set in stone, right? This is just what I like to do. This is sort of the workflow that helps me stay organized and keeps keeps my layers separate. And and if you if you keep things separated, if you keep your contrast, your saturation, your, your masks, you can adjust it all later, mm -hmm. right? If I start... If I come back down here and, to my black and white point and start adjusting my saturation, then I can't go back and adjust my contrast separately or my separate saturation separately. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah all right. So we're going to uh, add a second color wheels layer here and call this saturation. And then I like to add saturation in my highlights and midtones mostly not so much in my shadows i think things start to get a little a little too unrealistic when you add too much saturation in your shadows that looks pretty good to me and looking at it it sort of follows this line you've mentioned in the past sort of like a 10 20 30 thing like you would want your your darker saturation at ten percent, twenty percent, and then thirty percent going up in as, in your value. So like the yeah. the brighter sections should have 
way more, like three times the amount of saturation of your darks. Yeah. Give or take. Yeah, somewhere around there. There is sort of like a, a bit of a standard that some people stick to in terms of saturation. But yeah, you really want to keep an eye on your vector scope up here. It looks like uh, we have a lot of a lot of reds going on, uh, mostly from this glass here. But then also some of that red channel is bleeding through up here in the in the wood. Um, so we'll we'll just keep an eye on this vector scope. Make sure you don't sort of start reaching these points up here, because uh, then you're going to be oversaturated. And it's not going to look very good. But and for the sorry to slow down the process here, but for all the beginners like me, talk to me about that vector scope. What am I like? What am I looking at there? So this is telling you what color values you have on your screen, right? So uh, as as you can, it, it's like showing you where the color is on this wheel, right? So you have reds up here, you have yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. We don't have a ton of blue, cyan, or magenta colors in here. A lot of reds, a lot of yellows, um, and that's pretty much it, right? She's got a little green here, but green is basically yellow. And it's, <laughs> and it's fairly dark. There's not a lot of luminosity in her green. Her yeah, right. exactly. Okay. So this is, it, it's kind of representing luminosity and saturation values here. Cool. Okay. And what's that line? You've mentioned that before. Yeah, this line is uh, skin tones, right? So uh, skin tone should lie on this line. We'll, we'll get into that um, a little bit later with our interview. I'm getting ahead of myself. All right. Yeah. Um, all right, next on the docket here, saturation. Uh, next thing I like to do is um, add HSL curves, and this is going to be my black and white saturation. And this is, I'm going to go over here to the saturation versus luma curves, and I'm going to pick, so it's got, this is my black point down here, right? That's going to adjust the saturation of my blacks, right? And then this is my white point over here, and that's gonna adjust the saturation of my whites, or of my highlights. So the x-axis is a spectrum from black to white, and yep. the ups and downs is your saturation. Correct. The y-axis. I create two points on either side, change this to linear. That one will be smooth, and I bring this all the way down, so I know my whites aren't gonna have any color in it at all, right? The brightest parts of my image, things that are 90 to 100% white are not gonna have any color in it. Okay. Same thing with my blacks, right? I don't want any sort of tint going on. I mean, there's not much here really, but just, for, just to be safe, this is something I add on every single shot. Okay, this is, this is like a baseline layer that you'll always add. Baseline layer. Okay, yep. cool. Uh, so next thing I'm noticing is uh, our subject's face faces are a little dark. One way to check that is come over here to image analysis in the final, in the color finale panel and click false colors. False colors gives you a representation of your light values, right? So down here is dark, up here reds are super bright, blues are super dark. Skin tones, you want to land somewhere between 58 and 77%. So in those shades right? of gray. For a proper interview, this is what we would do. For this scene, I'm gonna fudge it a little bit, right? Because I, I have a ton of dynamic range. If I bring up too much, too much, if I add too much light to the subject's face, we're gonna get a lot of noise and the image is gonna start to break down. And also in photography terms, we're sort of in a semi-silhouette scenario here right it's a lot of s's um but yeah so it's so semi silhouette meaning you there's they're not fully silhouetted it's not just their outline against a light background but the background is brighter than our subject which unless you're intentionally doing a semi silhouette can be a bit of an, an issue but because we have this bright window out back we've set them in front of a brighter background and because of that their skin tones we can sort of get away with their skin tones being a little darker mm -hmm. is is that that's where our heads are at, right? Yeah. And we, and we knew that when we were shooting it, too, so that's why it is shot a little dark. Yeah. And I'm going to go back to my contrast here, and I'm going to bring this back up because that is a little too crunchy for me, especially on this monitor. These Mac monitors are, what, like 5,000 nits of brightness, and it's a 5K monitor, and the contrast ratio is a million to one. Uh, 
so um, it sort of uh, will produce a crunchier image, right? I really like to color grade on this BenQ because it's already a pretty contrasty um, monitor, so it leaves my image a little more uh, flat and natural. And that would just be better so that like it's more pleasing on a wider swath of monitors. So like if people Correct. are watching it on their laptops or cell phones or on televisions or whatever it might be, it'll be a little more universally pleasing, I assume. Correct. Uh, we're going to add another curves layer here. And I'm going to label this subject one face. And we're going to get complicated here. We're going to add a mask. So just like you do in Photoshop and actually Lightroom these days, just added masking. Um, this is sort of the same thing, same process, right? I can, I'm adding a curves layer here. And then we're going to add a radial filter just around the subject's face here. So I want his face to be a little bit brighter. Add a little feather, bring him around 75%. Go click this, click the mask button again, and come back to the curves and just subtleties, right? It's all about the subtleties. Bring up the shadows, bring up the midtones, and that's looking pretty good. I just mm -hmm. want a little more brightness on his face. A little before and after. Perfect. Another huge bonus of color finale in your masks, you can track your masks. So we have a little bit of movement in this subject. It lands pretty well on his face without tracking it, but I'm gonna go ahead and do that anyway. And we're gonna track this. And all you did was press play and it's just auto gonna, automatically and gonna track? Automatically gonna track his face. You put it over his face and it finds a subject and works pretty well most of the time. Cool. Even with her hand coming in front of his face here, it's it's looking pretty good. So far, it hasn't slipped it at might, all. Might track that. Oh. oh, there we go. Wow. Pretty good. Pretty good. And so we're going to scrub these days. over that. And that's not so bad. Cool. Where and for it? those of you watching who are thinking like me, that's not going to make that much of a difference. It's, it's, uh, it can be more pertinent in different scenarios, right? So this is and once we like get an And once we get to the end, you're going to see the before and after and go, oh, well, my I, God. Yeah, I just, mean, <laughs> I just mean the tracking for specifically, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, yep. that's not a, it wasn't hugely necessary to track that shot. But, no. but I'm going to do the same thing and, here on subject number two's face. And I think for her, it's going to be more obvious because she's going to slide back in right. the frame. And add the mask. Another little radial filter. Perfect. Feather it so it's not as harsh of a line. And then same thing, just right up in the mid-tones, a little bit in the shadows. That looks great. And again, Master and Luma, I'm going to go Luma. Just so we're not yep. oversaturating her face, right? Correct. OK. And we're going to go back to that with him, too. Yep. Right, because he got a little red when we brought that up. Totally. OK. Um, all right, the other thing, so when I, as I'm sort of going through these, these are sort of my basic steps, right? I do, I do these four things um, pretty much for every shot. And then I sort of go through and uh, pick out the things that I don't like about the shot, mm -hmm. right? What is it? I don't really look at the things that I do like. I, I recognize them some of the time. But I'm just looking at all the things that makes this a bad image, mm -hmm. right? Thing that's really distracting is this cup right here, and actually a lot of this. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna come over here to six vectors. This again is red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, and yellow, and this is just a real quick way to adjust your colors. And so Ooh, it's touchy. It is touchy. You can go real far, too far with these. And so I think skin tones are a little red here as well as um, the wood paneling up here. So we're going to shift red just very ever so slightly to the left and get a nice flattering. And that's introducing more green tones, yellow tones? That is shifting red to yellow. Towards your yellow, OK. So like you can watch it. You can watch it up here on the vector scope. 
So okay. that red line, you'll see it. That's yeah. shifting yellows to red. That's shifting reds to yellow. Okay. So, yeah, those reds move yeah. way into the magenta or way into the yellow range. Yeah. Okay. That looks pretty good to me. Again, subtleties, right? That is not much of a difference there. The normal person would not see that. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's say you have a monitor that already has a little bit of a red shift or a little bit of a green shift or something. If that's a little off and then you put it on a cheap monitor or a TV that has a, some sort of color shift, it's going to be even more accentuated. So yeah. the closer to correct, the, the better it'll universally please any monitor, right? Yep. Okay. So this looks great to me. This is pretty much a, a finished image. Mm -hmm. You know, I might do something like um, add a little ProMist filter on here just to sort of soften it up. And this ProMist filter does what? This blooms your highlights. I right. see. Yep. Okay. So it's like pushing your highlights out from the point where it meets the darker ranges. Gets that white, gets those those highlights to sort of wrap around each uh, of your subject of those darker points, right? Mm -hmm. And that's becoming pretty popular in the industry right it now is. is to shoot with a ProMist filter. And if you didn't shoot with one, this is just a digital recreation of what a ProMist filter would do. Totally. Uh, and we picked up this, we picked this up free from Final Cut Pro. Right. Yeah. yeah. Shout out Final, to him. Final Cut Bro on YouTube. We'll leave a card somewhere to the video on how he did this, and he gives you a free download if you want to just download it. You, yeah, you can make it yourself or download it. Uh, yeah, so I love, I, I really kind of like the look of that. We're going to just reset that so it's not as harsh. And... That looks pretty good to me, you mm -hmm. know? Nice soft skin tones here, those highlights wrap around, sort of just makes it a little more warm and inviting, right? Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really loving the way this looks. I think we're gonna go back to color finale and I'm gonna do a few more things in my uh, layers panel here. Um, balancing your image with the right color, I'm not seeing much shift in my mid-tones or shadows. Sometimes uh, I'll come into the color wheels here and just sort of shift, just like push colors into particular areas, right? If I want to warm up or cool down an image. But this, this is right on point. This looks really good. So I think it's time to add a look, LUT, on top. And this again is very subtle. This is so we used to shoot Fujifilm. We've very recently switched to Sony's, uh, but I really still like the look of the Fujis. And this is a Fuji Direct 709 lot that I just like to add a little bit, 10% maybe, and just sort of gives, adds a little blue to the shadows, which I really like and warms up those skin tones a little bit and adds just a little more contrast. And it's really not much, but I think it, it really sort of g defines our look in terms, of, in terms of color grading, so. Just finishes it off a little bit. Totally. And gives a, a consistency to all the shots. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll go back through these, start unchecking these and show what we started with. All right, that's flat and boring. Yep. So we uh, added color finale. We added our uh, phantom neutral LUT. We then checked our black and white points. Well, I guess we first uh, color temperature, black and white point. We added some contrast, some saturation. We took out saturation in our black and white points. We added a luminosity mask to our subject's face. Subject two's face, we adjusted our colors ever so slightly. Uh, that was just an example, we can get rid of that. And then we added a little bit of a look on top of it. And that's a that's a pretty gorgeous image from, from my eyes. Simple as that. Simple as that. <laughs> on to the next. We're gonna move outside.
We're going to do the same thing uh, we did before. Color finale. We're going to add that neutral FX6 LUT again. Whew. That looks really good. If you guys don't shoot, if you shoot Sony's and you don't have these Phantom LUTs, they are worth every penny. Mm-hmm. Every single penny. They get you closer to a final image than any other LUT has before. It's not a one-click fix for all your shots, but it's it's close. And he's got a lot of other like specific like look and stylized LUTs. We're not yeah. really into those, but I think if you were more into narrative tales or if you were trying to do a little bit more of like a thematic look, you might be interested in some of the other stuff that he's got going on. But I mean, even for us, even just like the neutral LUT was worth every penny. Yeah. Uh, so this is exposed fairly well. I think it's a little bright, especially for what I want to do afterward. So we're going to bring that back down a little bit. Temperature looks pretty good to me. I know her jacket was white, and so I'm going to pick that. That looks a little cold to me. So I'm going to bring this back, warm it back up a little bit. That looks pretty natural. Again, add some sharpness and maybe just a touch of saturation just to get me to a good spark starting point. But I'm seeing I'm starting to clip my my blacks here a little bit. So. Oh, yeah, I can see that over here. Yeah. So we're looking at the waveforms here. You can see as he's bringing that saturation up and down, some of those blues are just starting to get. Yeah. Blues and green are starting to get a little. Yeah, so we're going to be real subtle with that. Uh, edit layers, again, color wheels, just those blacks and those whites. I know it was a really bright day, but I don't want those. I don't really want those at 100%. That doesn't look good to me, so somewhere around there. Don't need to add much contrast because, again, really a ton of contrast in this scene already. We were shooting in the, what was this, 1.30 in the afternoon? Pretty much midday sun. Midday sun. And we're on the snow as well, so there's light reflecting all around, the, all over the place. It is filling our shadows for us, which was really helpful. That's a, a benefit to shooting on the snow, but it's also creating just tons of white throughout the scene. The whole, you know, the whole lower half background is all white as well, so gotta just be a little careful with contrast on the snow. Definitely. Um, I'm not gonna. I'm not really adding a ton of contrast. If anything, I'm sort of pulling it out. I don't want these highlights super bright, so we're gonna just pull that down a little bit. That looks way more natural on the skin. We're gonna check out false colors, and that skin tone is landing right in that gray mark is where we want it. So yeah. that looks that looks really great. Right around the 75%. Yep, nice, nice bright highlights on her jacket and her bindings, that's great. All right, then we're gonna add some saturation again. Not much here. And we're gonna have to be careful with this one. Orange is a really quick color to get crushed, right? To get super yeah. punchy. And he's wearing an orange coat, which is great for us. It's, yeah. You know, adds some color contrast. Orange, um, you know, it, it complements the blue sky, the blue pants that our middle subject is wearing, and, you know, those those more blue cool shadows. But we got to be careful with it, right? I mean, look at the vector scope here. Mm -hmm. There is a ton of red in there, and that's all coming from his jacket. There's a couple of ski poles and skis in the background here. That red is really popping out. But I'm, I'm, this is just adding saturation to the whole scene, and we're going to keep it nice and subtle. And then I'm going to go to six vectors, and I'm going to adjust. I'm going to bring red back down because that jacket is punchy. And adjust the color just a little bit. And this is, I assume, just from your memory. I mean, we were there that day. We know what that jacket looked like to our eyes, and you're just trying to make sure that coat looks the way you remember it looking. I mean, the way I remember it and also pleasing to the image. Okay. I mean, I sort of weigh that over how it looks when I was there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I just want this to sort of fit into the scene well. Okay. Right? Again, some really crunchy reds in the background here. 
And are you going to find that in the reds? I mean, you might even find that in magenta even, right? I mean, some yeah. of those skis and ski poles. Absolutely. Yeah, look at that. You're yeah. losing some of that. It's like the, the fluorescent red. Is, Ma magenta's, magenta. magenta's sneaky. It doesn't feel like when I'm adjusting my reds and I'm not getting the color that I want, It's gener I generally go to that magenta mm -hmm. and it, it fixes it. So That one is it's a dangerous one. And yeah. it's easy to forget about because the way magenta is explained or like displayed... I feel like no, there's no purple in my scene. Right. But magenta's not like that. Right. It's sort of the same as like if you if you're any photo editors out there, you, you, if you want to adjust your greens, you have to adjust your yellows often in Lightroom, which is kind of a weird thing in Photoshop. Same way, I feel like video greens are a little more true to green. Yeah. Or at least in Sony and Fuji so far. So I'm gonna do the same thing I did uh, from the last image, and I'm gonna desaturate my my very black points and my very white points. And we're moving a little faster now because this is the same as before. Right. Yeah. Again, you're really not going to see, you see like a little bit in her jacket here. It's more of like a safety move. It is, yep. Sometimes it's really noticeable, right? If you have really dark scenes, sometimes you get sort of those greens and purples to move into the into your shadows. Um, uh, but in here, it's not really a big deal. And I think this is a clean scene, but yeah, like sometimes you'll see a shot and it just feels muddy. Like the colors are just feel like they're just bleeding all over the place. And I think we're going to get that into that in the darker scene, like our first scene for sure. And then in our interview that's coming next, yeah. I feel like, you're, you know, we're going to see some of that sort of like muddy feeling where yeah. everything just feels sort of the, yeah, like it's just not crisp. Right. Um, so again, uh, I'm going to, instead of, this is adjusting sort of my orange and reds and I really want to just keep it that way. So I'm going to add another six vectors cause I think this blue is a little undersaturated. And so we'll just label this reds. All right. And blues, we're going to just add a little saturation here till somewhere, somewhere in there. really don't want to. No, nope, but that, that looks good. And I want it to look like a nice blue sunny day. Get those blue pants popping and, and that sky popping. So that looks good. Without overdoing it, which is, it is easy to overdo the blue sky. Yeah. Especially like in that scenario where you want it to push the, you really want it the pants more than the sky. Correct. Correct. Uh, and so again, this is looking really good, but I want to bring a little more focus into the center of this frame. We filled the frame pretty well, and I might, you know, depending on the edit, I might even crop this a little bit, blow it, you know, just scale it up a little bit, but I really kind of like it far out. I like the skis over here and the mountain in the background. I think it really sets the scene well, but I want to just bring a little more focus and attention in. So I'm going to add another curves layer. We're going to go with a mask, and we're just going to add a big old vignette to this image. Somewhere in there, we're gonna feather this to 100%. And we have to invert it as well. And so it's just gonna affect the outside edge of this mask. And we're gonna just bring that down just a little bit, All right? It's not much. Mm -hmm. And you can barely, you can't even really see the gradient. You just like feel, yeah, you, you just feel it. Feel right? pulled into the center a little more. And vignette is easy to overdo in photography and video, so be Absolutely. careful. Absolutely, that's, like, that's that's too much. That's I think terrible, yeah. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere in here, just again subtleties. It's all about the subtleties with with color grading. I want this image to look natural but attractive. And circling back to our point from before, you know, before we were doing a, a semi silhouette situation, but in this in this scenario, our our key light, our sunlight is right on our subjects and there should be nothing brighter in the scene than our subjects in an ideal world, right? You, yeah. The eye naturally goes to the brightest part of a scene. And so, you know, I, the snow, what notwithstanding, I suppose, other than that, realistically, our subjects should be the thing that your eye is drawn to and the light needs to do that. Correct. And so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to add that Fuji 709 light on top. Right down to 10%. 
bring that right back up to 100%. I want to see that again. Yeah, so it's really like, it's really doing that, that punchy blue and that... Orange and blue a lot. Yep. Yep. Sort of shifting your colors to orange and blue, like getting away from the greens, the magentas, the cyans, the yellows, right? Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's the opposite of... I mean, look at that vector scope. Mm -hmm. pff, pff, straight line across, yeah, right? So much cyan. Com complementing colors mm -hmm. is what's happening here. Orange and teal. Orange and teal. Classic look. But I I really like the subtlety of it, so I'm going to go 10%. And again, it just, it's, it's making those blues and oranges way more pleasing. Gives it a look that is really hard to recreate. And yeah, you can see it in her cheek, her... Yeah. Uh, on the, her subject on the left there, her cheek yeah. warms up a little bit. The other two are covered up because it was a cold day, but um, yeah, you see it in the sky. Just gets away from that y yellow, green, and purple look, right? Which isn't as flattering, so this is a great look. And that's, that's done. All right. Go a little before, after. Great. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. There we go. All right, we're going to move on to an interview, an outdoor interview. Mm -hmm. That's lit. Um, so real quick, just to uh, give people a sense of what we did here, uh, we have a negative fill or a, or a, like a black piece of fabric to his left, right, sort of at, uh, at head level. Camera left, sorry, not his left. Camera left, his right. And then above that, we're sort of like up on the uh you know, camera top left up at the 45 degree angle, we have a flag over his head. We, we popped like, it's like a two stop diffuser that's up over his head. And, uh, and then to the right is our key light, which is just a uh, one by one panel. As we were walking into the scene, it was sunny and bluebird. And then we started setting up. And as we finished setting up, it was just straight overcast for the, the rest of the interview. So actually got some really, really nice light out of this. Super soft light. But for those of you who are looking at this and with a really judgmental eye, you'll see it's a little underexposed, which if you've read or heard or shot anything with Sony, generally overexposing is the ideal scenario. But given that the sun was threatening to come out again, we really wanted to make sure that we didn't blow out our background if and when the sun did pop. Um, so it is a little dark and we're going to have to deal with that, but that's all up to you. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's all right. We can, it's not, there's plenty of dynamic range and information in these Sonys. And if it gets a little noisy, we have tricks for that too. Tricks, tricks, tricks. Um, we're going to jump right into this. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, uh, this is another shot from that same day and we pulled out a gray card so we can get our white balance right. So I'm going to add color finale. And this is the gray card we use. It's the X-Rite color checker, the photo passport. Um, and it's just, it's just that perfect, was this 18% gray? So we have it here on screen. I'm gonna use the white balance picker. That looks, uh, that's it. That's perfect white balance. Looks a little green maybe, but we can fix that later. Um, all right, so this is under, a little underexposed, like we said earlier, just because we were afraid of the sun coming out. Uh, so we're going to bring this right up. Do you want to grade this shot or the Actually, previous yeah. shot? Uh, so now that we have the white balance correct from this shot, I am going to copy. Which is Command-C. Command-C. And then Shift-Command-V. Paste the attributes that you had just copied from the previous clip. Clip. I'm gonna unselect volume, I have color finale selected, and we're gonna paste that. And just to be clear, if you use just regular command V, it'll paste the actual clip that you just copied, and it'll cut it right into wherever your playhead is, so make sure it's shift command V when you're trying to paste any attributes, whether it's yeah. color grading, whether it's you know volume levels, whatever it might be. Yeah. So now these white balances should match. Looks like the light shifted a little bit in our background, but the white balance shouldn't have changed too much. And certainly not on our subject because he's flagged and lit with a yeah. uh, panel. So like we said before, uh, this shot's a little underexposed because we are worried about the sun coming out. So we're gonna bump this right up. That looks really good already. 
we're going to add that neutral FX6 slot. Does a lot of the work. Sure does. In this shot, at least. Sometimes not so much. And that's what that LUT's doing. Pretty good. White balance is correct. I'm not going to add any saturation because this is already pretty saturated. We got a ton of yellows and reds in this scene uh, from his skin and the foliage. Going to add a little bit of sharpness, not much. And then we're going to dive right into the, uh, the layers panel here. We're going to adjust our blacks and our whites. We're going to bring our blacks up a little bit. This was more of a corporate video, so I'm not gonna uh, um, probably have this as punchy as uh, the last two, right? You wanna sort of think about the purpose of your video and edit accordingly, right? So for a corporate shoot, I want a nice bright lit face. Uh, you know, for these bar shots, I want it maybe a little more dramatic, a little more contrast. Uh, I, like, you know, add that ProMist filter, give it a, give it a little bit of a filmic look. And, uh, and so just think about the purpose of your video before you start grading. And even like your subjects, like clothing choice is going to affect the way that you grade, right? Like if Correct. he was wearing black or if he was wearing bright green or orange, the whole scene would, would have changed a little bit. And you can work with your subjects, right? You can talk to your clients about what they might want to wear, or you can just, you know, fly by whatever they choose. And in this scene, he chose some nice earthy tones, a gray vest, dark jeans, great to, to match the scene. So that worked out really well. Yep. Um, uh, jump right into the curves. Maybe add a little contrast here, but not much. It's already a bunch in this scene. Or from the LUT, I and should say. And that doesn't look like you did anything. Turn it on, on and off. Yeah, so subtlety. Look at that. I mean, the curve doesn't look like it's been changed at all, but yeah. but the shot changes. Absolutely. That's crazy. Actually, I want a little more contrast down here and then bring those shadows back up. So that's just adding, you know, darkening the, the extra dark parts of my scene. Down in like the 10% range. Yeah. You can see on the Luma curves. So yeah. It's just pulling those darkest parts down it really gives it that realistic look when you when you add contrast in your lower lower part of your mm -hmm. blacks there all right again not much saturation really really subtle here because it's a fall scene you definitely want some colors to pop but because it's a fall scene the colors are there so yeah. you and and that LUT's doing a lot of the heavy lifting with the saturation as well correct because it's underexposed, we're getting, I think it's sort of pushing more of the red channel here than the orange. Uh, as Paul mentioned earlier, this line here uh, it should be of interest to, to you when you're shooting interviews. This is your skin tone line, right? This is where your skin tone should lie um, on your vector scope. Uh, one way to find out uh, you know, there's a lot of yellow, a lot of reds in this scene already. So to to isolate his skin tone, we're going to come over here in the color finale panel and we are going to click on image, image analysis and isolate um, a part of that scene. So you can choose a rectangle, you can choose ellipse or a horizontal line. I am going to choose the rectangle, and I'm going to choose just his face, right? Let's get, okay. And, and you now can see, I can really see where that where his skin tones are on that vector scope. And that's why his skin felt red, because you can see it is. It's a it little is. further towards the red channel than it should be. We want it to fall right in the middle of that flesh line. Correct. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to six vectors in my red channel. And I'm going to adjust that until his skin tones land right on that line. I'm going to take this off. Red, nice, pleasing, I would say orange skin tones, right? Maybe it's even a little too far. Sometimes I think Color Finale, if they shifted this 
one degree, <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it would be. I think it would be better. Yeah. So just uh, keep it a little further north. A little further I I think yeah. Red adding a little more red. red. But it's at least a good guide, right? Like you can you can sort of choose where you want it to be on your own. Correct. Right? And then I'm gonna adjust these yellows just a little bit, just so they they're not so green, and that they're a little more orange. I want it to feel. I want it to really feel like fall there. But and you can see there's still plenty of green on the green foliage low left on the scene, right? So yeah. just like trying to separate the yellows from the greens a little bit. And really, I want to add a little yellow. I want to make sure there's some yellow in his skin tone as well, right? Mm -hmm. If it's all one channel, if it's all just orange, right. you have no depth mm -hmm. and texture in your skin tone, For right? Sure. So, yeah, that's uh, a huge difference. That's a huge difference. I mean, that looks great. when you first did it, it's like a very stark move, and you're like, oh gosh, he looks green. Yeah. But now going back, he looks like the Kool Aid Man again. Yeah. All right, I'm going to do saturation in my black and white points again. All right, and then the next thing I'm going to do, I need to check his skin tone again, make sure, or luminosity. So we're still a little underexposed on his face here, and even on his body, I would say. I want his, I want him to be the brightest part of that scene, right? This window, we're going to let slide, because <laughs> that's just impossible. Uh, but I want him to be a little bit brighter. I want his body and his face, right? If I was just to add luminosity on his face, then it's gonna it, it's not gonna look balanced. It would look really fake. Right? Look really fake. So I'm gonna add an ellipse to the whole scene to him. Add feather to that again, probably seventy five percent. And we're gonna just bump this up ever so slightly. Actually, I'm gonna take this too far. That's overexposed, right? It's actually not even that bad, but it's a little over, I think. And because the center of the ellipse is on his torso, right. I think his face is coming out all right, but it is making his, it's making his yeah. vest a little brighter than it needs to be. So I'm gonna bring that too far, and then I'm gonna bring my exposure back down just a little bit. Yeah. Now he just really pops. The eye goes right to the subject. Yeah. It's a I'm big gonna, difference. I'm going to leave the highlights up, and I'm going to bring the shadows down just a little bit so it looks more natural, blends into the scene a little better. That looks pretty good to me. Big difference. Big difference. Uh, again, I want him to be the center focus here, right? I think this shed is a little too bright over here. And so, I, like, it's sort of drawing my eye away. I like the balance of the shed in him, mm -hmm. but I think it's too bright, especially right up in here in the leaves. So, again, curves. We're going to add a mask, and we're going to add a radial, or sorry, a graduated filter mask. And we're going to bring those highlights down a little bit, but it's getting too crunchy, right? So I want to just lift the shadows ever so slightly. And that's just, that's going to balance our scene too. We have a yeah. fairly centered interview here. Yep. Um, so our left and right side just should have somewhat equal weight at this point. Correct. Um, we're going to go back to this one and I'm, we're going to track this one as well. Start at the beginning of your clip. And track. And let's say you don't start at the beginning of your clip. Does it? You can work? track forward and then you can track backward as well. Okay. So you could have started right where you were. Yeah. So it wouldn't ruin yeah. anything. And to be honest with you, this might be overkill for this shot. Tracking, he's pretty stationary. Yeah, because this is an example, you know, right. we're going to just do this. But we know for a fact this guy stood like statues still for us, which was fantastic. He was yeah. a great subject. But even that, even just the little shoulder movements, it's grabbing, and that's awesome. It'll make it more natural in the end, right? Because it'll mean that you don't ever see that that uh, mask like bleed out past his arms or around his head or something and, and give you that fake look. Correct. 
Uh, yeah, so that's our little luminosity on him. Brought down luminosity over here on the cabin. We're going to check false colors one more time. Looks like I got great values on his face. I could maybe go a little bit brighter. Um, in camera, I probably would have, but because we were worried about that background sun, we uh, shot it a little dark, but this, this looks really awesome to me. Um, I'm going to add that Fuji LUT again. That's fall right there. Yeah. <laughs> and nice and subtle with it. Again, you can sort of see this like, per like maybe a little bit of a purple shift in his jacket. And I think this just really helps. Turns those greens a little more orange, those those yellows a little more orange. And I think it's just a really pleasing look. I mean, I think when you had that turned on to 100%, you could see exactly, like really accentuated how much it was just bringing warm tones into it, right? right. It's just like that right. at 100%, you can really see what you're trying to do here. And then down to 10%, you're just introducing those warm tones in the in certain color ranges and it really makes the scenes that much more warm at the risk of sounding like a broken record. So, yeah, that's uh, I think that's pretty much it for this shot. We'll do a little recap here. Fuji LUT, graduated filter uh, on the right, radial filter over him, uh, black and white saturation, shifted our colors a little bit, a little more saturation, contrast, black and white points, and the LUT and a little exposure adjustment. Start with a nice flat shot. There we go. Simple as that. Simple as that. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you guys can see, it's not an easy process. Color grading is not simple. Even adding the LUT, you saw how close we got with it. And still, I mean, what is that? eight layers later, we're still editing. So uh, give you an idea of what it really takes to uh, get a shot to a point where it, it, it not only looks good to you, but is gonna look good universally across a lot of different monitors and a lot of different scenarios. Um, and, and there's just, every shot is different. So you're gonna have to just get in there and, and dig around with these different settings until you until you get to a point where you're real happy with, with, uh, with your final results. So. Uh, we really hope you found this video helpful. I know I learned a lot. I hope you guys did too. Spencer truly is fantastic at color grading. Um, and these are just a few sample shots. But if you guys want to see some different types of scenes, some different styles of, of color grading in, in different uh, examples, things like that, give us a comment down below. Um, if you do anything differently or if you saw something that you think we could benefit from knowing, leave that in the comment section below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And thanks for sticking around with us, you guys. I know this was a long one. Um, and it took uh, quite a while to, come on, autofocus, don't ruin my outro. <laughs> Damn Sonys. <laughs> uh, if you guys found this video helpful uh, or interesting, give it a thumbs up. Uh, and yeah, this was definitely a long video. So let us know if this was too much and you want us to break this into little smaller sound bites or if you think this really in-depth, thorough style of video is helpful for you guys. Um, yeah, happy shooting. We'll see you guys next time.